I got this really nice 2017 Dodge truck here and I really really love the truck it's a four-wheel drive uh, I have used the four-wheel drive on it and it works tremendously awesome but the thing I don't like about it is this is a black truck and if you look at it everything's blacked out on it except the bumpers and I think it looks really really tacky now one more thing that's not blacked out is our emblems and I'm gonna go ahead and purchase some new emblems for it later down the line that'll be blacked out but what I want to do is I want to get rid of that chrome because I think with the black wheels and everything being black except our camo down there that's how I bought the truck this is some special edition called mossy oak um, it was only made for one year I think but uh, we're gonna leave the camo on there but I think that by blacking out the bumpers I think it'll give it a totally different look and it'll be more slick and what can we say sporty than having two chrome bumpers and everything else black on it so what I have done and we'll take a look at the rear bumper as well and you can see that's a chrome bumper too and then we'll be replacing this later down the line uh, you can actually buy these as a set for the rear and the the rear emblem and the front emblem for like 30 bucks on eBay but uh, what we're gonna do is I actually purchased two bumpers now these are paintable bumpers these are aftermarket bumpers and what I'm gonna do to them is I am gonna go ahead and rhino line these bumpers now the reason that I'm gonna rhino line them instead of paint them black is because once again this is a 4x4 truck now if this was a street commando and it didn't have 4x4 on it I would probably paint them the same color as the truck and be done with it but since it is a four-wheel drive truck we're gonna go ahead and rhino line them using the Raptor liner uh, I call it rhino liner because that's what everybody calls it but the product that I'm going to use is called Raptor liner to uh, achieve what I'm trying to do here now we do have one situation my truck actually has parking sensors so we kind of got a little bit of a problem with that angle because the parking sensors that I have are silver so I'm going to have to go ahead and repaint those as well so they'll match because I don't want my bumper to be black and then have these silver dots in there like they're big giant pop rivets. So what we'll do there is we'll take my small touch-up gun and then we will actually paint those black uh, either with single stage paint or base coat clear coat. But when you paint these, you want to be very careful not to build the paint up very thick. So that's going to be a bit of a chore, but we'll get that done. So let's get in there and get our 4x4 Dodge bumpers uh, painted right, uh, with, I'm sorry, not Rhino Liner, Raptor Liner. And I'm going to take you through the procedures of how to do that. Very simple, very easy, and very affordable. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. see I got the front bumper right here and what I'm doing since we're going to be putting uh, a bed liner on these instead of uh, base coat clear coat or what have you I'm actually taking 80 grit 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand these bumpers down as rough as I can get them and I'm just going over it vigorously and making sure that I cover every spot on the surface that I can and the reason that we're using 80 grit is because that stuff has got to stick and it's got to stick good so we can't put a slick finish on these we've got to put a very rough finish now can you use 36 grit I guess you can if you want 
but you're going to get too coarse of a surface and you're going to waste a lot of sandpaper and it's going to take you twice as long to sand it. To do this type of a deal, the best grit to use is good old DA80 grit, dry, and then be done with it. Now you're probably asking, why didn't I do this on the chrome bumpers? The reason is because the liner will not stick properly to the chrome bumpers because of the chrome surface. You won't be able to sand it properly for the liner to actually work like it's supposed to. So if you were going to use um, chrome bumpers and you were dead set on using the chrome bumpers, then you would probably want to go ahead and get those sand blasted and get all the chrome taken off first to actually do it the right way. Now I have seen where people have rhino lined their chrome and within a couple of years the chrome, it starts peeling off and then it really looks like shit. So, you know, it's not made for chrome. Chrome is only there to get you home, if you've ever heard that. All right, um, we're pretty much done prepping up our bumpers. And what you're looking at down here, you can see, uh, I actually took some cardboard and I put it in place here because I don't want my floor to get ruined. So that's very important. Um, always cover your floor unless you're doing this outside. Now you can't do this outside in the grass or the dirt. It really doesn't matter. But if you're doing it on your concrete floor in your shop or your garage, you're going to want to cover the floor because that stuff's very thick and it falls. But what we got here is we got our Raptor liner. Um, this is a product that's made by Upol. This is the most popular uh, product on the market as far as do-it-yourself Rhino liner. Um, remember the word Rhino is a manufacturer name so we're not going to call it that, we're going to call it Raptor liner. And I've used this quite often on a lot of stuff. Now, another thing that we got here before we open the box, let me show you what we got. Uh, actually, I had a kit of this. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the truth. I had a complete kit of this, and it was in my shop here for like, I don't know, a year and a half, two years. And one of my employees stole the son of a bitch. Stole the whole kit of Raptor liner. This shit costs $100 if you can find it on sale, anywhere from $100 to $150. And they stole it. I'm not going to mention names. I'm not going to mention names because obviously the cocksucker needed it more than my friend fucking Pete did. So, now that we've got that off our system, another thing that I had to purchase because mine got stolen is we had to buy the special shoots gun. This was $17. And what this does, I'm going to show you, it screws to the top of the bottle. And then you can either clean it out and throw it away, or what I do is I clean them out and keep them for further use. But since mine got stolen, uh, I had to buy another one. Now, I do have one for shoots undercoating, but the problem we have with that is that the tube that's on the shoots undercoating one is too short. So basically, I bought this whole kit just so I can get this long tube. So, you know, the guy that stole it, and he's probably watching this video, thank you very much, and I hope that uh, your truck turned out great. Thanks to my friend Pete. I really, really do. So, we're going to go ahead and get this on here. And uh, that's our shoots gun right there. Now, normally, um, you just took your air up to it and you go, but on this particular situation, what I'm going to do to ensure that I don't get any grease or oil or contaminate in my uh, spray method or in my Raptor liner is I'm going to go ahead and add an external filter on it to keep all the moisture and oil and grease out. We definitely don't want that. So there's our Rhino spray gun and uh, now that we got that let me go ahead and explain the rest of the situation to you. Um, if you're not working on a black truck, let's say you got a red truck or possibly a tan truck they actually sell this in a tintable, um, tintable uh, 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 
consumption. And when I say that, you can actually take your base coat paint, like let's say you have white, you can go ahead and take the take your uh, Raptor liner, which is the tenable stuff, and then you add some base coat white to it, and then it's white. And you can do that with basically any color. I've done it before. Um, here's some pictures that we're looking at right now of a truck that I did where the top was red and the bottom's tan. And it really came out awesome. I used to get a lot of uh, compliments on that. But uh, yeah, tintable Raptor liner. It's a really good thing to use. Just add base coat to it and go down the road. So when you open your box up, uh, let me turn that around. There we go. When you open it up, you're going to get four containers. One, two, three, and four. And then, of course, you're going to get your directions. But since we're watching my friend Pete, you really don't need that. And then, when you flip the lid open, you're going to get your activator slash hardener. Because basically what this is, this is an epoxy paint. That means it's non-sandable, it's hard as a rock, and it lasts forever if you prep your product properly before use, like you just saw me do. Now, when you use this, of course, you have to, uh, you know, split it up in fours. And when I say fours, so what we're going to do is you kind of look at it right here. Here's one. Here's two. And then we're going to go ahead and split that off. So that would be four sections. And even on the side of the can, it shows you exactly how to do it. Um, very easy, very simple situation. I mean, there's no rocket science to this at all, except making sure that you cover your floor, because you don't want this stuff to get on the floor. So we're going to go ahead and, and shake one up, all right, because we're only going to do one at a time. We're not going to use, we're not mixing all of them up. You only mix one at a time up, because you're not going to use all that. And if you do, at least you protected yourself. And if you don't, well, then you got a couple left over for somebody's steal. That's all I can say. And we're going to go ahead and open our hardener up. And actually, when I open this can up, um, I believe this is the fill line right here. So there's only this much in it. Okay, there's only this much in it, and then you fill it up to this line. So it's already pre-measured out and already... Uh, exactly, you know, the way that it's supposed to be. So when you add this stuff, you mix it up and you shoot, spray, and go. And did you see the word on there, hardener? It says hardener, see? Do you see that? Hardener. Anytime you see a product where you have to add two compounds together, all right, and one of them says hardener, that means it's non-sandable. You can't sand it and, and, and make it smooth again. All right, uh, here's a good example I got 2K Primer uh, Activator. Do you see right there it says Activator? That means that's the activator to make this primer work properly so it will be a non-shrinkable, sandable surface when you're done. Always remember that, especially when you're dealing with epoxy primer. Um, we don't want to get into epoxy primer shit, okay? Not on this video. You'll get me going on that, and I don't want to. So we're going to take this right here. And then we're going to go ahead and take the top off. And like I said, we're only going to do one at a time. We're not going to do uh, all of them. Because the guy that stole mine, he might have a friend uh, that might want to come over and visit my friend Pete. And he might want to steal these ones. So, you know, that'll save him some money. So we can't really look inside here, but... Uh, it's approximately filled up to about right here. This is the fill, this is how much filled in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up to this line here. Okay, so I put the lid back on it, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake this up very vigorously. Um, I believe there's a little ball in it. I think I, I hear a little ball inside it. So that's good. That's good that there's a little ball. And it says here that you're supposed to shake it for about four minutes. Uh, is that what it says here? Okay, it says E5. All right, we're going to shake it up very rigorously and make sure that that's mixed up thoroughly. Now, once you mix this up, um, you really got to go quick with it. You can't be messing around. I will tell you that this will not be enough to do a full-size bed. Um, you're going to need at least one and a half to two kits to actually 
raptor line your bed properly. They say that this is enough to do a bed, but uh, I've done beds before, and I'm telling you that this isn't enough. Um, when you spray this stuff, while we're shaking it here, while you're spraying it, make sure that you follow your spraying and you're chasing the dryness out, and you're going to see how I do that over here. But you want to chase the dryness out because you want it to be all one even color. Now, another thing that I can do with this, if I want to, to give it a gloss look, let's say I want it a little semi-glossy, I can go ahead and actually add some black base coat to this. Because what the base coat will do, it'll give it a semi-gloss look instead of that flat look. And uh, now that we're thinking about it, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that because I don't want it to be, and it doesn't take much, all right? I don't want it to be have that ugly flat bed look. I want it to have a semi-gloss look. So I'm going to take some black uh, base coat paint, and I'm going to go ahead and fill it up in here to the top. And I should have thought about that. I should have put that in before I put my hardener in, but that's okay. And it doesn't take much, but what that'll do, that'll mix in with it, and it'll give it that semi-gloss look instead of that flat, ugly look. Uh, once again, I want to remind you that if this was a street truck, I would paint the bumpers black, but since it's not, um, we're doing the Rhino liner, and I think it's really going to look awesome. Okay, so we got our product all mixed up. It's shaking. We can't shake it anymore, and, you know, hopefully we're going to have some left over for Mr. Thief Guy to come over here and steal it. <laughs> but the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and put our uh, shoots gun on here, um, our Raptor spray gun, splatter gun, whatever you want to call it. Now, when you spray this, what you're going to do is you're going to adjust your air. You don't want the air pressure real high. And then on the other hand, you don't want it real low. Um, I found out that the best air pressure that you can use using this product is around 30 to 45 PSI. If you go any higher than that, it's going to go on real thin, and it's going to be real dry. And if you go any lower than that, it's going to be super thick, and it's going to get real wet, and you're going to have a lot of runs. So you're going to want to play with it, get it to where it's going on perfect, make sure you hold your gun back far enough where you're getting a good pattern. You don't want to hold it real close. The closer you are, the skinnier the pattern. The farther you hold it away, the wider the pattern is. You want to blend this stuff in, you want to mix it in, and you want to flow it all together so it all looks like one color and not two. Let's get over there, let's spray some of this and see what happens. Alright, the first thing we're going to want to do is blow all that excess of dust off. Now, these are brand new bumpers, so I don't have to really clean anything off on them. If these were used bumpers, I would take wax and grease remover and possibly some denatured alcohol, and I'd clean them off really, really good. Uh, on this particular situation, we don't have to do nothing but scuff and paint. All right, we're working in a limited space here because i got a car in the background, but we'll be okay. One more thing. Um, you want to do this on a very mild day. You don't want to have to... Uh, do it in a windy situation so pick a nice mild day and the best time to really do it is around when it's about 70 degrees out um, sometimes in the summertime when it's real hot it dries real fast right now it's about 60 degrees it's going to be a good nice even flow type of spray situation so let's go ahead and get going because like I said once you mix this up it's already activated and starting to harden make sure you wear your safety masks all the time and let's go ahead and get her done. Thank you. 
let that dry for approximately 10 to 15 minutes, let it tack up. I'll go ahead and apply two more coats of this on there. Um, all depending on how you want it to look. The more you put on, the thicker it's going to look. And if you noticed, I was holding it about that far away. Um, I was tapping it. I wasn't really, you know, doing a full spray on it. But it takes at least two coats and possibly three to make sure you got good coverage on it. I'm going to go ahead and repeat my process. And when we get done, we're going to come back and see exactly what these things look like. All right, we're done spraying. I'm really shocked that it took less than a quart to do both those bumpers. And I'm talking very, very thick. So I'm really shocked about that. But uh, once again, that's what you're looking at when you're using Raptor. What I'm going to do is if you buy this gun, I'm going to show you how to clean this thing out. The first thing you want to do is clean that tube, of course, and then plug it in. And then what I got here, I got some good old lacquer thinner. We're going to spray it on that cardboard. Uh, one more thing is when you step on that stuff, it's super, super sticky. So make sure you don't track that in the house. But we're going to take this uh, gun just like this, and we're going to face it down on the ground here. And you can kind of see it cleaning out. And now our Rhino Liner gun is clean and ready for someone to steal it from my friend Pete and use it on their product or project. Believe it or not. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at that and see what they look like. And as you can see, when I walk up to it, it looks pretty awesome. Um, once again, I kind of wanted that semi-gloss color, so I went ahead and added some black base coat paint to the mix, and it should stay like that. Now, depending on the texture you want, is going to tell you how far away you got to be. If you want it looking real, real thick and gooey, then spray it close. If you want a nice, even pattern like you see on my friend Peace Bumper, then you're going to want to hold it back and you're going to want to do it just like I was doing it. So this is the situation. This is our Raptor liner and this is how you do your bumpers. Um, if this was a red truck, I would have got the tenable Rhino liner and I would have put red paint in it and it would have matched the truck perfect. So we're going to let those dry. Uh, I might not have time to put all these together. I still got to paint the sensors. And then I got to put all the bumpers together and I want to make sure those are dry. It takes approximately 24 to 48 hours to dry 100% thoroughly where they won't mess up. Another thing is don't touch it. Whatever you do, do not touch your Rhino liner because then you're going to mess your pattern up. Very, very important. We're going to let these dry overnight and hopefully tomorrow or maybe the next day I'm going to put them on my truck and we're going to see what they look like. Um, so let me get that done and then we will be back. Raptor liner right there. And then six months later, six or seven months later, this is what you're looking at right here. Um, you can see that the bumpers still look really awesome. The Rhino line, just the Raptor line, you can see that. And it's a solid situation that says that's the way it should be done. And I want you to look right there, by using the base coat black in the black, just by adding a little bit, it gives it a nice, uh, what can we call a semi-gloss sheen, instead of having that, just that dirty, ugly uh, white that it turns to. Um, one thing about Raptor I'd like to say is it's, it's a very good product. It works very, very well. And this is just one more use that you can use with the Raptor products. What do you think of them uh, Raptor liner bumpers? Pretty nice, huh? Really yeah, so you like it better than the chrome. You don't really give a shit one way or the other. So what do you think? As long as it doesn't cost me any money. So there you go. That's just one more little trick that my friend Pete can show you what to do to customize your ride. Rhino Liner is a good product. Raptor Liner is better because Raptor Liner is cheaper and Raptor Liner is an awesome working situation that says this situation has found the solutions to get her done and do it right. 
for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.